Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Matthew Hadamio, and I am the chairman of the Public Policy Committee. And this is this week's uh, Santa Fe Chamber of Commerce legislative update. Uh, it's designed to really give a lot of our members insight as to what's going on in Santa Fe and in and around the Roundhouse. It's an exciting time for many of those that are always involved in public policy, especially as it relates to the business environment here, not only in Santa Fe and the greater Santa Fe area, but our, our state as well. This year, unlike any other year, is extremely exciting with the revenues that have come in from the oil and gas industry. This is generational change in many respects, and hopefully number of the legislators have the same vision that we should build up New Mexico and ensure that we are no longer on the bottom of all the good lists and the top of all the bad. A lot of initiatives that the administration is looking at this year really encompasses this revenue surplus, especially looking at $50 million to the LIDA fund, $13 million that are going to be allocated to the JTIP fund looking at opportunity scholarships to cover tuition for all the New Mexicans and appropriating a little under $90 million to make sure that there might be the possibility that all New Mexicans can attend a higher education facility and education uh, university here for free. There's also a million dollar allocation to fund a new recruit and hire and retain certain law enforcement officers and staff around the state. Fortunately, Santa Fe really hasn't seen a lot of the, uh, the crime wave that has hit some of our other states, but that doesn't mean that we aren't susceptible to a lot of the uh, potential violence that could hit our, our city. And this money would go a long way into ensuring that all of us and our families remain safe throughout the, uh, the rest of uh, the year. There's also an allocation that uh, the governor has proposed for 277 million to provide 7% raises to New Mexico education personnel and increase education pay levels. That would put New Mexico teacher salaries above those of our neighboring states. It kind of feels nice to think and say that we are gonna be above our, our competitive states in a good way and also help educate our children and really reward those folks that really spend the majority of their time with our children, making sure that they have those opportunities, that they can succeed and become whatever they need to become uh, in this world. There's also a lot of other initiatives that we are gonna see that really compound uh, assisting our, our crime and, and making sure communities are safe, looking at initiatives that help can build our, our tax structure and really promote a lot of new technologies related to the energy space, such as battery storage and extending tax credits related to solar and, uh, and, and rooftop solar uh, programs. There are other things related to new technologies, such as the hydrogen push that the governor is, is pushing that will be uh, heard sometime later on this week. That will be an interesting conversation. But other things that we're looking at as well is a general update on what the legislation is doing. There's just under 400 bills that have been introduced, ranging from anything that you can imagine, but there's one caveat, especially on a 30-day session. It's only relegated to what are budget and fiscal related items and what the governor has proclaimed are important through a message. There are two different processes that the Senate and the House have to have these discussions. And it remains to be seen what we will uh, be able to discuss uh, with our elected officials that really help build up our, our business economy moving forward. So last week was more of an organizational type week. This week, they're starting to get some work done. Bills are running through committees. And I think as we get to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'll really start to pick up uh, momentum all next week till we get to the end of session, which is on February 7th. Looking at what's going on at the Roundhouse, it's a little more restrictive than it has been in years past. However, it is a lot better than it was last year where the entire Capitol was closed to the general public. First to attend the Capitol, you must have your vaccination and be boosted. There are metal detectors this year to make sure that there is a safety protocol that is followed to ensure that everybody that goes in and around the Capitol is safe. Unlike years past, we are so used to seeing uh, different communities, uh, children, schools, initiatives, special days that are allocated to really advocate on, on what their initiatives are. Unfortunately, that is not going on this year. 
also there's not a lot of events that are are really being uh, uh, really being pushed this year just because of safety protocols and things like that. If you look at what's going on in the House, a lot of their committees are being held virtually. If you look at the Senate, they're trying to go as business as usual, keeping in mind that there needs to be a safety protocol that is, is really upheld to. It is a lot different uh, compared to what we've seen in years past, but it is it's great to inch a little bit closer to some normalcy related to how we interact in and around the Capitol. As we look at a lot of the initiatives that the chamber has really been vested in, especially as it relates to economic development, education and workforce development, regulatory and government accountability and workplace issues being deemed a fiscal session. There's not a lot on the table as it relates to a lot of these, but if, we, if we're really concentrating on trying to build up New Mexico, economic development is really a big push. There are some initiatives that chambers, uh, not only the New Mexico chamber, but other chambers across our state are really engaging in, and that's really fully funding certain departments to ensure that uh, economic development is, is created and able to do what, they're, what they need to do. Looking at CYFD and, and health, are, are those budgets really solidified to make sure that they have enough people and more importantly, the right people in a position to pull those, um, pull those missions out and really get out in the community and, and assist those that are in most needs. If, if we're looking at job creation, I mentioned JTIP and Lita. Expanding those programs have always been something that the chamber is, is really vested in because we can not only attract outside businesses, we can also help stimulate our local businesses from within. And that's something that always really helps build our economy, especially coming out of a pandemic, which we've been engaged in for the last two to three years. If, if we're looking at education and workforce development, I think really building up the, uh, the pay scale compared to what our other states have done really will do a lot, not only for morale, but really en enlist a sense of urgency that uh, you know, our, our kids are getting an education that, uh, that they deserve. You couple that with the, the funding that has been allocated in sessions past related to pre-K and all the way up through uh, 12 and our university levels, hopefully programs will be initiated and help stimulate really that educational, uh, educational space to where we can start raising the level of, uh, of our kids' education. Again, drawing back on economic development, making New Mexico a little bit more competitive and definitely more attractive for other states. We've started to see a lot of initiatives related to regulatory and government accountability. The New Mexico Chamber has really led on the forefront of trying to ease the burden and regulatory red tape. So New Mexico businesses and or entrepreneurs have an easier pathway to success where we don't have to go to so many places or the burden and the rigors of filling out applications is, is minimized. And, and looking at a lot of these initiatives that has really fallen on the governor to take a leadership role and really help to institute that type of support. So that's fantastic as well. Also, as we look at workplace issues, we're also trying to stimulate, you know, are there initiatives and look for opportunities that the Santa Fe Chamber can, can be more visible in supporting a lot of these things that really would put more people back to work help stimulate economies, whether it be through tourism or uh, increased pay related to those that really uh, deserve it on, on the front lines, especially if we're looking at supporting our, our local hospitals and the folks that come in and out uh, really to help keep our, our communities safe. So again, it is early in this legislative session. It is a little slow, but that's usually how it is. Things are a little bit different, but that's okay because the business community, not only in Santa Fe, but everywhere around New Mexico is good at adjusting. We're good at evaluating what situations that we're in, kind of taking all the information that we can and really kind of figuring out how to trudge forward regardless of what kind of situation that we end up in. It's, it's a wonderful process and a wonderful time if you're a policy geek like some of us are. Uh, but next week, we'll have a little bit more update. We'll talk a little bit more prescriptively about some direct initiatives, and we'll have a lot more information. 
hopefully we'll have Ricky Lee Chavez join us to give some insight as what she's looking at too. So you have a different perspective on a lot of what she's looking at as well as what I'm following related to business initiatives. So I really look forward to hearing some feedback related to what you heard. If you wanna hear some particular things, please send it through the social media platforms that this is distributed on. And if you have any insight that you'd like to add or a different perspective that we need to uh, consider, I'd love to hear that as well. So I really appreciate you taking the time to listen with what's going on. I really look forward to touching base with you next week. Have a wonderful and safe time. And thank you very much for participating. And thank you for being interested in the Santa Fe Chamber.